Good evening, councillors. Would you please stand? Welcome to this ordinary meeting of Huntersville Council number 4472. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet tonight and the waters that surround us, and I pay my respects to their elders, past and present. We thank you, Lord, for the honour of being called by our fellow citizens to this office of honour and trust. Give us grace, diligently and honourably, free from private interest or prejudice, to discharge the duties entrusted to us, to the common good, and is in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. <coughs> So we have one apology, just Councillor McLaughlin isn't able to join us tonight. Uh, are there any others? Any declarations of interest, Councillors? Uh, Councillor Collins. Uh, yeah, I have a, a non-pecuniary, non non-significant on 4.2, um, which I'll stay for, uh, and also 4.5, which I will um, leave for. Thank you, Councillor. I have a uh, non-significant, non-pecuniary interest in item 4.3 and a non-significant, non-pecuniary interest in uh, item 4.5, which I'll also leave for. Thank you, Councillor. So we move to the confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting. Moved Councillor Williams, seconded Councillor Prasoy. Councillors, any discussion on those minutes? Councillor Sanson. Just a few points, Mr. Mayor. Uh, find them. Yes, uh, the, with the questions without notice with uh, committee papers that I've asked at uh, uh, 7.1, uh, part two of the question that I asked was intended to uh, refer to committees as a whole rather than specifically the uh, local area traffic committee. So my hope was well, what would come out of this is that uh, agendas for all uh, committees of council would be made available to uh, all councillors at the same time as they are made available to uh, members of that committee unless there's some reason of confidentiality that would prevent that. That has been happening in some cases. My concern is uh, that uh, at uh, point two of the response, uh, there's an answer that uh, uh, that the matter will be referred to the uh, next local uh, traffic committee meeting, that being whether uh, their agenda should be available. I think that seems to have things the wrong way around. At the end of the day, I think council should be determining the agenda of the local traffic committee. The local traffic committee should not be uh, determining whether in fact, uh, councillors can see the agenda in their minutes. Uh, there is one other point I'd make, uh, which for some reason or other has come back. This is a question I asked quite a number of meetings ago. Uh, that is 7.7 uh, .7 in the minutes. Um, if you have a look at the answers, point three and point four seem to be simple, uh, seem to be similar. Point three is, it seems to be saying that. Uh, uh, well, it does say uh, council will consider only uh, if Revenue New South Wales uh, queries are fine, it must be dealt with uh, through the court. Uh, that seems to be a statement of policy, whereas it seems to be stating that again as fact. In fact, I don't believe that is fact because that is inconsistent with the agreement that we have. So I'm still of the view that uh, point four of that answer is incorrect. Okay, we'll take, take that on those. <coughs> Um, three, Mr Mayor. Can I, uh, just to answer, um, I, I have sought and I have obtained legal advice in relation to that question, which I can um, talk through with councillors in more detail, but the answers as they're provided do reflect the, the um, legal advice we've been provided. Thank you. Councillor Collins. Yeah, I have a question regarding question without notice 7.1 regarding the results from the Reby Road consultation being made available to councillors. Um, I thought this matter has been dealt with, but um, if I can ask a question of Council Sanderson, if he actually made a submission. Did, can I ask that did, through you, Mr Mayor? You can. Did you make a submission? No, Mr. Or no, anyone in your household? No. 
Okay. Thank you. I have a, uh, I have a concern that, um, yeah, res re yeah, giving those results of the Ruby Road consultation to, um, you know, councillors that live in the street might be, might be, um, you might want to check with the neighbours first. Is that something that we would look at before right. actually making it available? I don't think it's appropriate. So, how would that come about? We'll take your question on notice again. Thank you. We'll have a look at it and come back to you. Thank you. Hey guys, the general manager to come back to you during the week. Thank you. Any further discussion on the minutes, councillors? I will just say one more thing. Councillor um, Collins. My question about councillor expenses. Um, the same question was asked at meeting 4448, um, and um, uh, if I just could get a breakdown similar to how it was done um, at that meeting, uh, which I can. Yeah, it's, it's in the business paper. So, that's okay, thank you. Any further queries or questions? I'll put the motion. Those in favour, against, that's carried. That's unanimous. Thank you. So we move to item 3.1, motion for development of active transport model. Uh, moved by Councillor Crassoy, seconded Councillor Sanderson. Councillor Crassoy. Thank you, Councillor Sanderson, for partnering with me on this motion. Um, Mr Mayor and fellow councillors, um, as you would all be aware, active transport, healthy minds and bodies is something that I've been passionate about since before coming on to Hunters Hill Council. Um, so as background to this motion, um, getting more people active, getting more people walking, feeling safer in their community, in our villages and around our schools has always been a priority. Um, as far as bringing the motion now um, to council, I feel that the timing is right to bring the motion as we head towards the end of um, 2019 and into 2020, uh, mainly because we've done so much work over the last year in council uh, that I feel we're potentially equipped to do this quite well. Uh, we've done a, a, or are completing a safety audit of the suburb, a review of all our assets, and as we go into the 2020 budget, we'll also be looking at preparing a bicycle management plan uh, for the suburb as well. So the motion reads that council develop a staged active transport model for the municipality targeting schools, transport hops, and shopping villages. So active transport modelling includes um, opportunities for people to walk safely, ride safely, commute, um, break up their trip uh, to basically encourage people not to get in their car at their front door and out of their car at their destination. Um, so having active transport, the goal of it is to have less cars on the road locally um, and for people, pedestrians and cyclists to feel safer moving around, in, particularly in those key hubs. Um, the second part of the motion is raised because several people happened to, um, it's something I've been passionate about since I was a parent at Baronia Park Primary School when I was um, one of the drivers to implement the drop-off zone. Um, but the idea of a walking school bus is, is uh, done around the world. It's not a complicated process. It's basically about encouraging kids to uh, walk safely to school together um, with or without a supervising adult at key locations along the walking path. Um, coincidentally, Councillor Sanderson and I had different people on different occasions recently uh, raising with us their concerns about global warming and their concerns about traffic in the area and how to reduce the movement of cars up and down the peninsula, particularly at peak times and around the Pittwater Road area as well. So it seemed timely to bring that in um, for council to be considering. Um, it would also be something that uh, we haven't specified any school and it would be great to have a school that took an interest in it. Obviously the people you'd want on board for that would be the PNF and the parents and uh, there are opportunities around um, state funding and grant opportunities to, to try and drive the idea, but if we could even partner, for example, with Ride Council on something at Baronia Park School, just throwing it up there, um, because a lot of the kids at Baronia actually walk along Thompson Street and through Baronia Park as well, so uh, there could be a real opportunity there. At the same time, Hunters Hill Primary School reducing any traffic going off the peninsula, I think you'd have a lot of parents 
um, pouncing on the opportunity to see less cars going up and down the peninsula at peak hour. Um, and then lastly, we've just added to this recommendation because we did do a bit of background and um, as the poor general manager would know, I've been <laughs> um, on this for quite some time and uh, there are other councils already doing this uh, in the state and there are um, organisations who are promoting healthy, active minds and bodies. So I couldn't resist adding this last part in there because it's a, it's a something that we try as a council to do, to seek partnerships and to collaborate and uh, not just around the funding of these things, but actually around the good juice to get uh, good ideas on the ground. Um, so, and then I, we've just put some outcomes at the bottom there. Uh, basically, we just want to increase physical and mental well-being and a sense of safety in our villages. Uh, and obviously by reducing cars on the road and car travel, we're reducing pollution, um, but we're also taking a bit of weight off the congestion and traffic that happens around our school zones and in our villages. That's the motion. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against the motion? Not against, just a question. Councillor Miles. Oh, Councillor Cresswell, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, Council developed a st staged active transport model. How do uh, how do you see that being developed? Is this being done through committee, or is this being done by the staff wholly and, and brought back to council laws? Or obviously, this seems to me like something that will be more councillor driven. And you obviously have initiatives in this space. Is this something that you want to form a committee on, or is is it or a working party, or is is it something you just have it left to the staff? Councillor Cresswell. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, I would initially be happy for the uh, council senior staff through the general manager to make their recommendation uh, to us on how they feel this could best be driven. Um, I know that they, uh, through their partnerships with other councils, I know that they would probably have access to how other councils have done it, so I guess that speaks to part three. Um, I've loosely, we've loosely suggested early 2020 for the walking school bus idea, but the active transport model I haven't put a date on because I don't want to put too much pressure on the senior staff and the general manager. Uh, I just want it to be there as something that they're aware that we as councillors believe is important to the safety in our suburbs. So um, I wouldn't want to suggest how the general manager would like to do that. I, I would expect that they will probably come back to us with their suggestions to us as what support they need from us as councillors and perhaps from our school principals committees or from our school PNFs, but um, I rely on the general manager's advice then. Thank you. Councillor Collins. Um, I'm supportive of it. Um, Thank you. Two and three, um, great idea. Um, the, just the number one, I'm a little bit confused about what, what it actually, uh, if it's a statement by right. council, mm. I agree with it, mm. but is a model Give my ignorance, is it, a, is it a model or is it just pathways or footpath? I don't really understand them. Councillor yeah. uh, um, I'd be happy if you'd like to, Councillor Collins, change the word model to strategy, if you would prefer, if that would give it more clarity for you. Um, but basically, uh, the idea would be, uh, and the reason the word staged is in there, is that because um, we have done our safety audit of the suburb and because we're doing our asset review, um, there's just an opportunity now with our Main Street committees as well to look at which areas you might pilot uh, some ideas in about how we encourage people to walk more. I know on the Main Street committee, for example, uh, we uh, lobbied hard with uh, Dr Sharp to get some bike racks put in up in the village because we thought that if commuters would ride their bikes up and park there to catch the bus into the city rather than drive and park around the village areas where parking is a premium. Uh, so it would be, I guess, once again up to the, uh, the staff who've developed the safety strategies and, and the people who are aware about through, for example, the Main Street committees, the concerns that some areas have around parking um, and uh, that they would sort of advise how it would look. Um, so if strategy would work better as a word, I'd be happy to change the word model to strategy. Um, but the idea is that it sort of overarches planning that you do in those areas to support the businesses and the residents uh, to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor. One question, um, just for the General Manager. Do, for number one, would you know what to go ahead with and do? 
Does that make? Yep. yep. Okay, cool. Well, then I think it's great. I'll, I'll probably understand it better when it's, it comes back to us. Okay, thank it's you. It's a great idea. Uh, Councillors, any further discussion? Councillor Miles, are you speaking against or for? For. <laughs> for. Councillor Miles. Um, it's a good motion. I think more, um, I take it the number one's a, a, a more of a statement than the developing of specific strategy because I think this probably rolls into a whole lot of different things. I think the, the bike plan uh, is essential. We have uh, in uh, the, the safety audit which is being completed, I think it rolls into that as well. Equally, we've got it coming up in 3.5, the opportunity to start a school safety uh, working party. And I think that's something that you could particularly push this, um, you know, school bus, the, the walking school bus through it would be that that committee and then potentially when the bike plan comes up, uh, hopefully next year when we get the funding for it, uh, we can push uh, a lot of the, the, the um, cycling safety and then through the safety audit that we're doing we could probably push. So I, I, I applaud the direction of the motion but I think that the, these strategies are, this, this is obviously a good statement for us to make but there's, there's some stuff that this could probably roll into quite neatly. Um, that are coming up being obviously the safety audit, the cycling strategy that we, we will need to complete at some point and then potentially, um, depending on how uh, 3.5 goes, the formation of a working party for school safety. I think this all rolls in very neatly to, uh, to that, so it's a good motion. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak against? Paul? Councillor Sanson. Thank you, Mr. Baird. I'll just be very brief. Uh, I should point out that uh, Walking school buses was a policy that I suggested back in 2017. So I'm very happy that uh, Councillor Crassoy has uh, provided the opportunity to, to uh, have this on our uh, agenda. Uh, I think the walking school, school buses uh, is a thing where there are, there's really nothing that you can say against it. Uh, and I note uh, that uh, when you spoke at the, uh, uh, the, the thank you morning tea for uh, uh, our volunteers on Thursday morning. You spoke about uh, the uh, uh, social isolation that is caused in modern worlds, and it's even possible for students. So I think it's a great starting point that uh, students walking to school together in a supervised fashion, if that becomes part of their day, uh, that, that uh, it, it, it is just a great outcome in terms of exercise, uh, in terms of uh, you know, promoting the, the social interaction between between the kids, getting traffic off the road, and uh, I, I just can see that there, there could be no criticism of this idea, and uh, so I'm absolutely delighted to support it at this stage. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak against? For right of reply. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Can I put the motion? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's carried. It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Item 3.2, um, motion to reduce water consumption in Hunter Silver, moved by Councillor Miles, seconded Councillor Collins. Councillor Miles. Uh, Mr Mayor, um, this is obviously born out of um, some quite significant media that Hunter Silver received in the last couple of weeks, particularly um, because of the harshness of the drought and the, and the bushfires coming on. Um, I point particularly to the Sydney Morning Herald article which I will table and the Channel 7 coverage of Hunters Hill's water consumption being one of the highest in the state. Um, we are consuming on average 305,000 uh, litres of water per year which is uh, much higher than the state average. Um, in terms of the motion, I, I think that it's important that um, uh, obviously council leads from the front and I'll just read the motion as, as it uh, is put. Uh, that Huntersville Council investigate ways in which Council can reduce its water consumption as an organisation, because I think it's important that we leave from the front with this and look at our own um, uh, water consumption as an organisation and see where we can take measures to uh, reduce that. Uh, number two, that Council develops a strategy to engage with residents about how they can reduce their water consumption and water waste, particularly during level, and I will amend the motion because we have now reached level two water restrictions. Uh, as of last Thursday. Uh, and three, the council encouraged residents to benchmark their water consumption of the Sydney household average of 215 litres, uh, thousand litres of water per year. 
some 75,000 litres uh, more uh, less than we are currently consuming, 85, sorry, than we are currently consuming. Um, obviously, Hunters Hill is in... Um, uh, it, there are some differences in, in terms of uh, the land that um, we have to maintain, and there are obviously some larger households in Hunters Hill that will likely consume more water, but I think that it is, it's important that we set that benchmark and try and uh, encourage people to meet that state average because there's obviously, um, uh, we've got ourselves into a situation where we are consuming much more than the average household and in these particular situations where we are running into level two water restrictions, I think it's really important that, that all of us look at our water consumption uh, across the Sydney Basin and, and do our part. Um, I did notice, and, and the motion was actually um, supposed to read as, uh, as um, Hunters Hill Council work with Sydney Water uh, in order to, uh, one, two, uh, points one, two and three. Uh, Sydney Water, I think, is someone who uh, is an organisation that we will be able to partner with quite effectively and just do little things that, that engage the community. I did notice that, uh, that Sydney Water are giving out these little timers, racing the clock to, uh, to have a shower. Um, these are brilliant. I mean, this is something we could send out with the rates or have in the front foyer um, or hand out at Mukabula or at New Year's Eve. Um, just to encourage and do our part to make sure that people are consuming less water in Hunters Hill. Um, I don't want to, to make, you know, blanket statements about, about our residents, but obviously we need to, as an organisation, do what we can to make sure that we are reducing that water consumption that starts in-house and I think uh, we need to use whatever channels we have to make sure that we are using less water uh, as a municipality and encourage others to do so. Good, thank you. Thanks. I'm not sure how we'll document the time of that. Um... I don't think that needs to be tabled. But... Great, thank you very much. Um, anybody wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Crassoy. Thanks, Mr. Um, I don't like to speak against the motion as such because it is um, a good motion with good intention. Um, just that I feel like we're um, doubling up a little. But before I speak to it, I would just like to congratulate the general manager and council staff on some of the things that council are already doing to reduce our own water consumption. Um, for example, I'll just read from a sign that is out in the council car park. Um, you might notice when you're walking in and out um, about rainwater harvesting. Uh, since the installation of rainwater harvesting tanks in 2009 at the Hunters Hill Town Hall and the Hunters Hill Council Depot, a saving of over 1,000 kilolitres per annum of precious drinking water has been made. The four rainwater tanks have a given capacity of over 16,000 litres for collecting rainwater harvested on the Town Hall and Depot roofs. It goes further, all toilets in the town hall and depot were retrofitted to dual flush systems. Water efficient retrofits of taps was also undertaken. The grey water collected from the roofs has been used to flush toilets and water the nursery plants in the depot. Hunters Hill Council and the Office of Environment of Heritage jointly funded the project. And Council would like to thank the Water for Life for funding. <coughs> Um, so that was really interesting to read and I'm really proud to see that Council's been doing things like that since 2009. Um, I'd also congratulate the st senior staff or staff um, who worked with Sydney Water uh, only a year or so ago to put um, water saving water fountains around the suburbs and refill stations for water bottles. So um, while everything in the motion is very good and, and very well intended, um, I do feel that Council's already doing some of that. What <coughs> Council may not be doing, I feel falls under a motion that I only brought to Council a couple of meetings ago. Um, item 3.6 at that meeting. Oh, the ordinary meeting on the 28th of October. Um, and in that motion, the first point in that motion, I ask for a report from the General Manager outlining opportunities for partnerships and projects <coughs> to support Council's strategic goals around sustainability. Um, and then further on in the motion, it says to look for opportunities for local engagement and education um, 
around sustainability projects. So, as I say, saving water is really important and I love everything that's in it. I just don't think it's necessary. I think Council is already working on it. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor Collins. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, first of a question, was in your motion, was there anything about water, specifically? No, it was about... No, okay. Oh, sorry, through you, Mr Mayor. Could, can could I ask you, a question of Councillor Crasher? It would be better if you spoke for the motion. Can I ask a question? Okay. Was there anything about water in your motion that you just mentioned covers all this? Okay, so what the motion says... Just water, I want ...around to... our strategic goals around yeah. sustainability. Um, so under sustainability, under breath. the United Nations... Uh, sustainable yeah. development goals. Okay, um, we're just talking about senior water, water, not the United Nations. Um, Councillor, okay, you've, you've asked yeah. a question. She's allowed to answer yes, the question. The answer is no. That, that we're leaders in sustainability. Yeah. Right. All right, thank you. Councillor Collins. Okay, so um, we can all do better with water. I, I'm going to admit I could do better. I've got one of those shower timers um, and uh, I do my very best to, to, to save water. Um, this is about engaging with the community. Council are doing great things. I, I don't think there's anything um, moderately offensive about this motion to Council's work. Uh, but even Council can do better. I can do better. Everybody can do better. This is simply about engaging with the, with the community about saving water so that we don't end up at the top of these lists about Hunter Sill being the worst water waste in the... Uh, you know, in, in New South Wales. It is, it is just a conversation. It is, it is not offensive. And I, I, I cannot understand, with everything that's going on at the moment, how anyone would, would speak against a motion to encourage, encourage residents to save water. I, I, I'm at a loss to understand that, but I guess that's the, uh, the, the, the politics of this table. So I support the motion. We can all do better. I can do better, and um, let's just do more about what we can, okay? And we're wishing to speak against the motion. For the motion? Councillor Miles. Um, Mr Mayor, I will just say, um, this is a specific motion about water, and it is a, uh, attempting to address a specific, both a specific media um, uh, specific media coverage that occurred that, that was focused on Hunters Hill, one, and two, uh, in this time where drought is, is ravaging the eastern coast of, of this country, we need to lead from the front. And I think that, you know, installing rainwater tanks in 2009 was fantastic, and if we didn't have a dual flush system in our toilets before 2009, and that's atrocious. Um, I mean, that is atrocious, not wonderful. Um, there is plenty that we can do. And of course, the general manager and the, the senior staff are doing that. One of the initiatives that Councillor Crasway mentioned, of course, was the water bottle uh, um, uh, refillers at uh, major sporting facilities and, and sporting hubs around Huntersville. Fantastic, it was wonderful. I'm glad that we got the funding from Sydney Water to do that. That's a great initiative taken by Sydney Water and this council and something that I want to see more of. This motion goes to us as an organisation looking at where we can benchmark and do better in our consumption of water, one, and encourage residents to use less water. And I think it is absolutely crucial that given the reporting of what Hunters Hill is consuming, that Hunters Hill Council do what it can to make sure that our water consumption goes down, not up, in in a time where we've got level two water restrictions. So I'd, I'd commend the motion. I think it is a sensible motion, and I could not, I cannot understand why 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 anyone would oppose it. Thank you, Council. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? We've. Uh, um, can, I, can I check again? Those in favour of the motion? Against? Uh, that's carried. Thank you very much, Councillor. Item 3.3. .3, the uh, motion to reallocate mayoral Christmas function funds. Get moved by Councillor Collins, seconded Councillor Miles. Councillor Collins. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, 
Um, I certainly mean no offence by this motion, but um, look, as a small council, we are limited in, in what we can do and what resources we can provide um, to, our, to our rural cousins um, with you know, the drought ravaging uh, and, and the, the bushfires that are on track to be the worst, I think, ever. Um, this, this, it, it's, not, it's not right for us in a situation like this to, um, I think we need, to, we need to be more proactive in what we actually do. I know we had a, a great motion last uh, couple of weeks ago to, to try and get a sort of, you know, help with it. That was an infrastructure levy, levy for the rural communities. But we, we need to um, maybe, maybe do something a little proactive apart from um, uh, that and, and perhaps do without something. I, and, and I think ultimately what, that's it, what this is. We have, a, we have a party that's thrown every year. Um, I don't. I, I don't think it should be thrown on the public purse. Um, I don't know how many people get invited to it. I don't know how people end up invited to it. How, how many people do we have through you, Mr Mayor, do we have come to the party? Um, I don't know. I think about 60, probably. 60. And it's a, is it open to the public? No. OK. So we should not be using public funds for a private event. 60 people out of 14,000 people is, is less than 1% of the community, and we're throwing $4,000 at it. Um, I don't think anyone uh, that that, att that would attend would mind bringing a bottle of wine and um, you know sort of paying their own way and perhaps um, might be more inclined to make a you know a, a donation. We could fundraise, but look, if we think about this four thousand, what we could actually do with it, we could buy you know Christmas presents for a couple of hundred kids, right? Um, that, that, have, that have lost their homes in the fires, or we could, you know, 60 of the nearest and dearest of, of I don't know if, it, if it's the mayor, but that's, that's it's, it's not appropriate to spend that money on that. It's, it's completely inappropriate. There is, a, there is a perception that this, that an event like this would be elitist. Um, I, I think if it's going to be, if it's going to be a private event, uh, it should not be funded uh, with public money. I think going forward we shouldn't be doing it. We should we should find another model of doing it. I think it should be a, a fundraising event, an opportunity to, to to raise money for a for a particular cause at the time. If it was this year we could do bushfires or, or something like that. Um, but for the last one, because it's already budgeted, maybe this year, spread a bit of Christmas cheer and do the right thing. Um, don't buy, you know, food and alcohol for sixty of the um, of the chosen chosen members of this community uh, and, and send it out to the country where they, where they actually really need um, some pretty basic stuff. So I commend the motion. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what we're talking about is a, a function that that recognises a lot of people that do a huge amount of work for this community. And uh, as a member of the community, when I was invited to, to these functions, I regarded that as a, it was something I looked forward to and it was, some, it was a gesture of appreciation from council for the things I did in the community before as a councillor. Uh, I think it's important that we hold this function and I don't see that uh, there's any reason to postpone it. I mean, the general manager and I uh, attended a, a function at Sydney Town Hall on Thursday evening last week. Uh, when we were let into the foyer, there was fund raising available. Uh, we both made donations in the end. I, I, by the time I was caught on the way out, I ended up putting about $80 in cash in, so it more than covered the cost of the, the uh, uh, I'm sure of any anything I received there. Um, I think it, it would be appropriate, you know. I mean, given that we've, you know, and I, I considered that this morning as we, to whether we could do that. But given we've already got the uh, uh, the rural wishing tree, and that would be available for people to make donations, and I think that people will feel inclined to do that. I don't really think there's any necessity for us to. Uh, uh, donate the, the money that we've otherwise allocated to this event 
because if, if we were to effectively, uh, if this motion were to get up as it stands, uh, it w would mean that we would effectively be looking for someone from outside to, f to fund the event for us. And uh, I just don't think that's appropriate, certainly not at this stage. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor Miles. I'll speak for the motion, Mr Mayor. Um, I think it is appropriate to donate. I think it is incredibly appropriate to donate to a organisation like the Country Women's Association Disaster Relief Fund, who uh, are a group of uh, very dedicated women from the bush uh, that are going to see frontline um, delivery of a lot of the um, the charity that, that should be coming from the city to the bush. Obviously, the last two meetings of council have been a little bit thematic. Uh, bush is the focus. Uh, the drought is the focus. Bushfires is the focus. Um, I see this as no different to that. Um, the idea that we're going to have a knees up, uh, you know, we have a volunteers morning tea as well. And, and that recognises the work of community members in this in, in Hunters Hill. Anyone that, you know, turns up to the committee meetings and does all of that work that, that we appreciate as councillors and as the council. We already had an event and we had it, as Councillor Sanderson said, last week. Uh, I think that it's a great thing that we've got a rural wishing tree um, in council and we're encouraging people to donate to that. But these communities have been ravaged, some for nine and ten months, some more recently during the bushfires. And I think that uh, if we can fund the mayoral drinks ourselves or encourage people to, to fund it themselves and send a bit of money to the bush, in this period particularly, I don't think that that is an inappropriate thing. I don't think that that's something that, that the community would see as, as less valuable than... 60 or so members of the community coming for a couple of hours and having a drink. And that's, uh, that's uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's as simple as that. That the that four or five thousand dollars that is usually spent on that event would much better be spent, um, you know, giving gifts to kids that, that otherwise wouldn't have, have gifts this Christmas, uh, rather than a knees up next door. Thank you. Anybody wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Williams. Yes, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I really find it strange that people talk about a knees up next door. Um, to me, it's important that Council does recognise people that contribute to our society, and there are a lot of people in our society that do that. And we do recognise the volunteers specifically because of their commitment and role in volunteering their time. But the Merrill Drinks has been traditionally an opportunity for uh, those in the community that contribute significantly to, to the well-being of Hunters Hill and its residents a chance to be um, acknowledged for that. And I, I think it's a very fitting thing to do. And at $4,000 or whatever it is, I think that's a modest amount of money to spend uh, for that purpose. We shouldn't forget the generosity of our community in terms of the issues which Councillor Miles has been talking about. I, I would be 100% sure that Huntersville community is contributing enormously to this uh, series of uh, events and, and um, community crises in, in regional areas. But I don't think we can send all our money to that cause. I think we as a community need to acknowledge within ourselves what's good and what's valuable as well. So it's a balancing process. Um, and I think uh, having that function is not a knees up, it's a genuine acknowledgement of those in the community that do contribute in a meaningful and uh, generous way to, to uh, Hunters Hill. So um, I don't see the reason to change what we're doing. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else wishing to speak? For the motion, um, against the motion, I'd like to speak against the motion. Um, this is not an either or. People who attend the function will be given an opportunity to contribute to 
the fires and drought relief as we've set up the, an opportunity for them to do so. Um, we do have a volunteers and committees morning too, which we had last week, it was excellent. Um, and that deals with people who are closely involved with council. The mayoral Christmas drinks is slightly different and sometimes it's we've had a bit of a crossover with some of the committees and but this year it, it'll deal with things like the police who are not on a committee or council and not seen as a volunteer in the community. The emergency services people who were recognised last week at Trans Zimmerman's uh, North Sydney Business Awards, um, so that they've been invited. Donors who contribute money to Mookaboola and various other events that we have on during the year. Um, and supporters of events, people who come along and work in the events that don't get paid for the events, they don't fall into volunteers, they don't fall into uh, committee members. Uh, and there are some committees which sit outside the normal function of council, like the, uh, the uh, Levesin 8 committee, which is not a committee of council, um, so they've been invited to this rather than to the other one because they're not a committee of council. So we've tried to change it a little bit so that we're dealing with a different group of people at this function. It's a very short function. It'll be over and done with pretty quickly. Um, what we spend will be as limited. We won't be spending a lot of money on it. Um, and I, I think that it's a worthwhile thing to do. Um, and I think it's a thing that council needs to, we need to do as a council, and I mean all of us sitting here with the staff need to do this to recognise. And, some, and staff are invited to this too, so we invite some senior staff to this event. Uh, and it's the end of their year and it's the end of their, it's a celebration of their year and we get an opportunity to thank the staff, as I do each time. Um, when we had the volunteers and committees the other day, I started off by thanking the staff. And again, it's an opportunity for me to thank senior staff who at this uh, thing. So um, uh, I understand the spirit of the motion. I'm not against the spirit of the motion, but I think it is an important event and we need to do it each year. And if I'm not the mayor next year, I hope the mayor next year will run it too. So Councillor Collins, write a reply. Thank you, Mr. Well, I think I can see where this is goes. It's going to go tonight, which is disappointing. Um, look, I... I with regards to Council Samson's suggest, I, I, I understand you would be appreciative when you were invited for your contribution to Council. That's because you're part of the 0.5% that this goes to. It's and, and for Councillor Williams to suggest that this is to recognise people that have had a meaningful and generous contribution, are, are we saying that 99.5% of Hunter Sill are not worthy of coming to this event this is elitism at the at the I, I cannot understand how anybody would think that that it is that it is okay and that, that it is to to you know for a mayor's christmas function functionally a a private party to be funded by the by council um and and I, I, it is disappointing that there is uh, there is just such um, lack of will to actually, you know what, go go out, go without something, and maybe maybe think to tell the community, if we were to go out and ask all the community, the 100%, not the 0.5% that got an invitation in the mail, the 99.5%, what do you want us to do with this $4,000? Would you like us to have? The mayor and his um, selected, selected, uh, chosen ones for for a knees up next door. Cause that's exactly what it is. Um, or should we should we send should we send it to someone that needs it? We could spend sixty dollars on each of these chosen ones, or we could buy Christmas presents for the kids that have lost their. Home. I mean, I just. But you know what? Um, it's it's not going anywhere. It's very disappointing. It just goes to show that there is just. Um, you know, there's only really community spirit around this table uh, when it's when it's our own community, um, and that's and that's disappointing. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? It's lost. Three point four. Motion to require children's community groups to adopt a vaccination policy. Uh, it's moved by Councillor Collins and seconded Councillor Miles. Councillor Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hope this is common sense, although I, I'm beginning to wonder what, what common sense is when I come to 
come to these meetings. Um, this is about council at the local government level doing their role. The, the state and federal government have done a terrific job uh, of, of implementing vaccination policy. Um, family, families that don't vac uh, parents that don't vaccinate their children aren't in eligible for family tax benefit. Um, and it's amazing how many of these anti-vaxxers, you know, redid their research and, um, and vaccinated their kids when, when they had that, that benefit pulled. Childcare centres can't enrol their kids um, if, they, if they're not vaccinated. Um, but we have, a, we have small community groups um, at a local level that are, are not funded by the state or the, or the federal government. They are moderately supported by council, whether it be some sort of a peppercorn rent arrangement or, you know, community grants. This is about us saying, uh, merely adopting a policy to say that if we're going to engage with a community group, then they've got to get on board with vaccinating their kids. It's, it's nothing more than that. Um, we don't implement the vaccination policy. It would simply be um, a, a statement um, from the group saying that they, that they, they have a vaccination policy. Um, so it wouldn't, you know, it's not a, not a terrific amount of work for council. Um, and this really just protects uh, the most vulnerable, um, you know, members of our community and newborn babies who haven't yet been vaccinated. We, we you know, we need a degree of uh, uh, herd immunity. Um, and anything we can do, anything we can do to encourage someone to get vaccinated helps all of society. It's a very simple motion. Um, it will protect children, it could save a life, and it can do no harm. And uh, so I, I commend it to the floor. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Sanderson. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I totally agree with Councillor Collins insofar as uh, we should do all that we can to encourage uh, people to be uh, vaccinated against uh, vaccine uh, preventable diseases for the list in Schedule 3 of the uh, New South Wales Public Health Act. However, we must be mindful of what uh, council powers are in relation to this matter. Uh, one of the th first things I learned in my study of administrative law was a doctrine of ultra virus. Uh, the doctrine is uh, that uh, an authority can exercise only so much power as is conferred by law. Uh, local government's role in the area of health is largely uh, the approval, inspection and issuing of orders in relation to a range of uh, premises from uh, those where food is served through to those where health-related services are uh, offered. Uh, so we must be careful about the powers. Uh, the New South Wales Public Health Act Part 5, Division 4 and Division 2 of the uh, Public Health Regulation provide principles of schools and uh, also principles of uh, childcare facilities, substantial powers to demand, store and deal with uh, immunity certificates. Section 86 of the Public Health Act uh, requires uh, school principals to record the immunisation status of each child in the school. Section 87 of the Public Health Act requires a principal as of uh, childcare facilities must not enrol a child or permit a child to enrol at, at, at a child uh, care facility unless provided with a vaccine certificate or similar. Uh, so the, the, the Public Health Act confers powers on, on, on principals of these institutions to, to keep their records. We also should note Section 30 of the Public Health Act makes it a, 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 an offence uh, to reveal the information that the Act caused to be stored uh, if it out, goes outside the meaning for the Act. The reality is that Council has absolutely no access to uh, information about who and who is not uh, vaccinated. It might choose to ask uh, members of the public. Members of the public would be absolutely uh, within their rights to refuse to provide that information. Uh, so, at the end of the day, the, simply, the simple fact is that the motion is unworkable. Uh, it's also a concern that the, uh, the motion is, uh, goes further even than uh, that in schools. Uh, look, I, I realise that uh, you know, there is a strong motive behind this, uh, or, or strong um, uh, incentive to, 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 to try to improve vaccination coverage but uh, at the end of the day the reality is 
that this motion is uh, completely unworkable. So I might ask a question of you, Councillor Sanderson. So your main point is that we are unable to request disclosure of information which would allow us to enforce some of these points. Is that correct? Yes, Mr Mayor. Uh, my concern is also that if we were to attempt to gain this information, I mean, there are risks we could be uh, breaching uh, uh, issues like uh, the various discrimination acts, uh, because I think health is a matter over which there's, uh, uh, people uh, might uh, be discriminated about. OK, thank you. Anybody wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor Miles. I'll speak for the motion, Mr Mayor. Um, this uh, motion came from the community. This motion came from a group of, of uh, parents in the community that were concerned that the organisations that Councillor Sanderson were talking about, they've got it covered. That's wonderful. That's great. They have the powers. But there are uh, the use of council premises now uh, by community groups that involve young children that do not require uh, proof of uh, immunisation. Now, as an organisation uh, that, that uh, is obviously supporting these community groups, um, I think it's our imperative to make sure, and this has been, and I won't delve into it, but this is, this is coming from specific circumstances raised with us by members of the community where uh, children that were not vaccinated were uh, uh, put into a group of children in a council premises. So there's real concern here. Um, Councillor Sanderson says it's not within our power. It is absolutely within our power to refuse council grants to organisations that don't have an immunisation policy. It is completely at our discretion. And disincentive in many of these circumstances is what uh, uh, wakes people up. Uh, so I'd say that this, this obviously there are, that there are, there are uh, sections of this recommendation that we can't enforce, but we can, we can ask for. And there's nothing wrong with asking for it. Uh, we can't demand, because yes, that may be libelous. But we are well within our rights, well within our rights to, to uh, refuse funding to organisations that don't take this issue seriously. And I think that, as Councillor Collins said, this is not a, going to be a, a burdensome uh, a motion for the staff, but it is something that uh, comes from the community and it, t it, it will not do any harm. In fact, it may do some good because this arose out of specific circumstances where unvaccinated children were, were put in a situation where uh, they were in very close contact with other children. And, you know, in this day and age, as, as the state and federal governments had made a, a policy point in enforcing the immunisation of children, I think we can make a statement here today and one that we can enforce. Particularly item three, which is we, it is at our discretion who we give our grants funding to, and it's not significant, it's not a hell of a lot of money, but, um, you know, they're here. It's funny, in, in a, a council area that is obviously a, a very well educated and quite affluent community in, in, in large part, but the last federal election, the anti-vaccination party was handing out in Hunters Hill, yeah. in various booths in Hunters Hill. I was shocked to see it, but they're here. And I think that this motion uh, is something that, that we can do uh, that will, uh, um, perhaps tell the community out there that have been put in this circumstance that we're serious about doing something about it. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against? Councillor Williams. <laughs> yes, Mr Mayor. Um, I'll just reiterate what uh, Councillor Sanderson said. Um, it needs to be workable and it's all very... Um, noble, all very important that children are immunised. And there's a whole series of processes, as we've heard, at a state and federal level that drive that. But we don't have powers at that level. It'd be nice to ask people if they uh, check that everybody has uh, immunisation. 
But what happens if one or two of the families say no? Does that mean all the other, the other people in that uh, facility or utilising that resource are excluded? I, I just don't see how you can, you can work a process that you don't have authority to be involved in and you're duplicating what a federal and state role is. <coughs> so to be good policy, it has to be workable, has to be achievable. And what I see here <coughs> is that it is not achievable and council doesn't have the powers or process to be able to do it. It can run a campaign in our newsletter promoting immunisation, but to put the onus on individual groups to be the watchdog on this issue I think it's not the council's role. Thank you, Councillor. Do you wish to speak for? I just have a question, Mr. Matt. Because Councillor Crasswell. Thank you. Um, just because both Councillor Collins and Miles, I'm a little confused about some of the things that you've said in point number two. Uh, because point two, sorry, point two here says that we adopt a policy requiring all children's services using council-owned property to exclude children who have not been vaccinated. Um, I'm, I'm just curious about the legal implications of that. And it might be something that I'm guessing that would have to be taken on notice. Uh, do we have the legal right to tell people how well, they I'm may or may not? I'm happy to refer it to the general manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, three, Mr. Mayor. Short answer, I'll take that on notice. Um, but generally, children's licensed children's services will have policies around attendance and vaccination. Um, in relation to, I guess, our ability to enforce that, that's something that I'd need to take advice on. OK. Do you wish to speak further on it? I won't, thank you. OK. What do you wish to speak for? Uh, I'd like to speak against, um, and it's with a great deal of consideration that I speak against it, only because I think we've got some advice that we're unsure about some matters in this. Um, I think this is a major issue, immunisation. I'd like to see us uh, do what you've suggested in the first point, Councillor, which is uh, uh, work with community groups to uh, develop a vaccination policy. I'd happy to see us do that. I wonder if uh, Councillor Collins, whether you would consider um, withdrawing the motion until we get some advice, uh, legal advice on what is enforceable and what's not and bring it back to council again with a view to getting support for the intent of this, which is vaccination. I don't think there's anybody in this room that's, that feels strongly against it. And maybe with a bit of uh, support and a little bit of crafting with your help, Councillor Collins, we could find something we all agree to. So that's a question of Councillor Collins. Uh, I won't withdraw it, but I'm, I'm willing to um, address those issues in my right of reply because there are actually no, there are no legal issues okay. at all. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Collins, right of reply. Um, so, look, this is, this is, it sounds like Council Sanderson's read the Public Health Act, but not actually my motion. Um, we would not be asking any children for their vaccine, proof of vaccination. It is, it is, we don't have the power to do that and nor would we have the resources. Um, it, is, it is simply about, it is simply about requiring the groups, the groups that operate within council facilities, there may not be many, there may be some, require them to do vaccination checks. And it is, it is common, most of them will do it. It is requiring them to do it. They have the right to do that. I'm willing to add a, you know, subject to legal advice on it, but the, the groups have the right to do it. Now, as for, um, you know, Council Sanderson's concern about discriminating against um, anti-vaxxers, I, I, I really have no problem with discriminating against parents that don't vaccinate their kids because, I mean, they're, they're complete dopes. It is, it is the most reckless thing you can do as a parent is to, is to have some ridiculous idea that you've, you've got on a website and found out some contrived lie, which we all know not to be true, but I won't go into that because I know, because I brought this motion, no one's going to support it. Look, that's a, I beg your pardon? Sorry, I sneezed. 
She sneezed, Councillor. I don't think she did, Mr Mayor, but I would, I would expect a certain level of respect um, I think she when, is, I, when yeah. I address the Chamber, Mr Mayor. Continue and I on. would appreciate that be given. Um, this is not duplicating anything. This is simply doing something where we can. It's not much. It is nowhere near as much as the federal government can do, or the state government. But it is something, and it is, it is simply saying that we are not going to offer peppercorn rent to any group that supports anti-vaxxers. This is us taking a stand to say that we don't support anti-vaxxers. They are not welcome here. We're not going to support them in any way. We don't have to. We don't have to. We're not discriminating. And, and I'll tell you what, if you think, if you actually think that we would be sued for discrimination for enforcing a policy of vaccinating children, I think that um, I, I really don't see that the, the state government would allow that to happen. So uh, sometimes we need to be bold and take on a bit of leadership. That's what, that's what we're elected to do. We're community leaders and we are taking leadership here and saying anti-vax, not welcome. If you want to have anti-vaxxers in your group, we don't, we're not going to support you. That's all it's saying. Right? So, you know, I, I, I'm at a loss to understand how anybody could um, think that that's not a good idea. Um, obviously, if there is something that turns out to be illegal in this motion, I think that the, the, the general manager, a uh, question through you, Mr. Mayor, if something in this, in this motion turned out to be illegal, would you be able to, um, would you have time to stop implementing it or would it be too late? Would you do your due diligence and check that it's legal or not? Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's often prudent to seek advice before resolving a particular way. So as a suggestion, if, if the matter was deferred, we can obtain some advice and then the council would have all the facts before them in order for them to make an informed decision. What is the legal concern here through you, Mr Mayor? Through you, Mr Mayor, the, the question I would have is if council adopts a policy based on the above, is it legally enforceable? So, and reading point number two, where it says the council adopts a policy requiring all children's services using council owned property to exclude children who have not been vaccinated in accordance with the um, government requirements. The, the question is through a lease arrangement or a hire arrangement, can you actually enforce that? And, uh, and councillor, I, I well, don't we know. We break the lease, no, but we could not sign so, a lease. No, yeah. So through you, Mr Mayor, my advice would be to, to at least seek some legal advice so that there's an, you're able to make, as a council, an informed decision. Okay, but I I'm, I'm, I'm just want to know specifically on that, I mean, we are, we are simply putting a policy here that we're not going to support anti-vax. Why, what is the problem with, with implementing this and then, um, sorry, with, with adopting this as a policy and then um, obtaining whether or not it's legal or not. I mean, what is, what is the problem with us making the statement and an intention to adopt a policy? And how do you, and sorry, if I can ask a follow on from that. Yep. As a council, if we, if we adopt a policy, this, we, we, we say that we want to adopt this policy, it would be a question of management to implement it uh, as much as legally possible, is that correct? Through you, Mr Mayor. Generally, when looking at a policy, you would look at the legal implications of that policy when drafting the policy. If, if Council was of a mind to approve this tonight and it was adopted, mm -hmm. then we, hypothetically, we obtained advice that said, well, actually, it's not enforceable. Mm -hmm. We would then need to bring a report back to Council to say, mm -hmm. this is the advice we've had. Can I? Through Mr. Oh, sorry. Um, can, can I ask a question of the general uh, manager, Mr. Mayor? Councillor, Mr. Mayor? Councillor, Councillor. No, excuse I've, me. No, that's that's inappropriate. Councillor, Councillor. You're using a technical argument Councillor. when we're actually trying to do something good here. Councillor, have, Councillor excuse me just a moment, yes, Councillor. Me. Just give me the chair just for a moment. Um, what I'm hearing the general manager say, and the general manager can correct me if I'm wrong, is. 
She would prefer that we sought legal advice because there's some doubt over this motion prior to passing the motion. That's what the general manager said. So, so that's her position. You can keep digging, but question. she's saying to you. One question. You can keep digging, but she's saying to you, it's better to seek the legal advice before you pass a motion. Can I? Can I? Add two words subject to legal advice to the beginning of the motion, thereby, thereby agreeing that we have intent subject to legal advice. Would that, would that satisfy? Um, Want me to answer it? I'll answer it. Um, she's suggesting to you. Oh, can, oh, I, can I ask the gentleman? As a suggestion, if the council was of a mind to adopt point one, mm -hmm. that we work with community groups um, around the education component. <coughs> and that we defer two and three subject to um, obtaining advice and we provide a further report back. So if we were to take one, the this council... Is Councillor Williams. This is right of reply. We're not reworking the motion. No, no. Is it, Ms. May, I, I think the you the have discretion here to basically do what's, the right, motion what's right for the community. Perhaps we could just get it done. I think when you've had speakers for and against the motion and it's called to put the motion, you're required to put the motion. That's my understanding. Is that correct? Oh, you have to have a second. No, of course. We well, he does whatever he's told. So. Yeah, but I think once, once there's been speakers for and against the motion, you're required to put the motion. Okay, well, the anti-vaxxers uh, win today then. Well done, Councillor Williams. I think you've yeah, got a technical argument. I That's think fine. To, I think you've... Uh, I think you've called councillors something they're not, and you shouldn't do that. They're not anti-vaxxers. They're not anti-vaxxers. I said the anti-vaxxers They're people tonight. That, and who do you think they are? Not the, the councillors? The people that don't believe kids should be vaccinated. Right. All right, so I'll put the motion. Those in favour of the motion, against the motion, that's lost. Councillor, could I suggest to you bring this motion back after we've sought legal advice? and bring it back to council. It's a valuable issue and we need to address it. With all due respect, Mr Mayor, we were able to pass it then with the general manager's input, but here we go. We move on to item 3.5, motion to form a school safety working party. Move Councillor Collins, second Councillor Miles. Councillor Collins. Do I even bother? Councillor Collins, you can have the floor. Well, this has come out of a number of issues that I've been um, working on over a number of years that a number of councillors have. Uh, Earl Street, Mary Street, Reby Road. Um, all these issues have taken far too long to get done. Um, I, I've worked with PNCs um, throughout the community who have, who, to be quite frank, have not been ha happy with the way council have, have dealt with this. Um, Reby Road uh, should have been should have been agreed to early this year. The only reason it came through was the persistence of the PNC and the support of the Weekly Times, who saw it as an important issue and championed the cause to get this done. What we need is better engagement with the, the PNCs around Hunters Hill. I'm putting my hand up um, to be a member of the committee uh, now. I put one councillor. If someone wants to jump on, because then I'm not going to oppose that. Um, I know that the the PNC uh, supported around all the PNCs would support this because we don't have we don't have a forum where all the PNCs can get together, work with council to work through safety issues, identify ones that aren't on the radar. You know, pursue the ones that are and are not probably getting the attention they deserve and. Ultimately, with the aim of achieving safety outcomes for children. So if you could just forget that it's me saying it and, and just realise that the objective of this committee is to make Hunters Hill safer. Now, this, a lot of the, the, the next big issue that's going to come up is the, um, you know, the overpass at, at, at Hunters Hill, which is, is not on our land. Um, what we need is somebody that can work well um, not just with council, we'll uh, tell you whether or not I can do that, but with the state government who's ultimately going to be responsible for that um, and, and you know, work to get these issues solved. So it does require a good relationship with the PNC, with I have, which I have, 
uh, with the state government, which I have, and I think we could we could really get some we could really get some runs on the board. Um, and of course, all councillors are ex officio; they can all come along. Um, I would encourage them to. Um, it's a it's a good committee, and it's engaging with a group that we have not uh, traditionally done um, very well. So I commend the motion. Thank you, councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against the motion? For the motion. Councillor Miles? Did you want to speak against the motion, Councillor Sanderson? Oh, Mr Mayor, I just have some concern um, for the motion that's all like this. Are you but speaking against the motion? Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes, I do have some concern with motions that brought like this. I'll, I'll compare it with the, uh, the motion I brought to Council to re-establish the Bushland Management uh, Advisory Committee. In that particular case, uh, I did a lot of consultation with uh, groups as to where, where that should go, a lot of research. Uh, I actually drafted a, a, a terms of reference uh, which now operate for that committee uh, and all the relevant legislation was uh, cited in, the, in, the, in that report. Uh, I had discussions with yourself and the general manager before the motion was uh, even uh, uh, lodged. Um, a lot of work went in. Uh, I can't see the same work in this. The other concern I have with school zones is that it has to be a two-way arrangement, that it's not just uh, about schools, it's also about communities, and I think communities was tended to be a bit left out of some of the processes in recent times. Uh, you know, there's some concern over uh, the, the safety for people travelling uh, over the overpass down the Church Street, and I, I don't know that that got the uh, consideration that might have had in the processes to do with Ruby Road. So I, I just uh, have some concern at this point in time. I think in the long run, uh, I won't be attempting to do it in this term of council, but uh, if I'm fortunate enough to be a member of council uh, in the next term, uh, I think there's a place where some of these things could be dealt with. And I know that uh, the uh, uh, transport for New South Wales, as, uh, as I believe, uh, there was a, 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 a session at the local government or New South Wales or local government New South Wales conference that Councillor Crassel and I attended, where um, transport for New South Wales was saying that they will have a different approach in this area. They'll be talking about place of movement. I hope sometime in the, in the, at the during the term of the next council, that we may establish a place in the movement committee, and this will look at issues like this in a more overarching sort of uh, manner. So I just have my reservations about uh, forming another council uh, committee of council at the motion with with no reasons and uh, no background given. Thank you, councillor. Those wish to speak for the motion, councillor Miles. I might suggest that the ether place that we might discuss things around school safety is a school safety working party. And I might direct you to point two, but part one, point two. Consider workable solutions to issues identified by the committee in consultation and input from the community and educational organisations. The word community is in there. I'm not quite sure where that's going. Now, this is a very simple motion. Council staff can draft up, uh, along with any councillor that, that is interested in this issue. It is obviously a long-running issue. We've had Reby Road, where we are getting hammered from the Hunters Hill Public School. Uh, we've got the St Joseph's College crossing on Mary Street. This is obviously an issue that is cropping up time and time again because there isn't adequate consultation between the PNC, the council, and the community. So, quite simply, what we are seeking to do is to form a committee where there may be one councillor, there may be two councillors, we all sit on there as ex officio members anyway, so we can all turn up. And we try and deal in a consultative way with the PNC community and the general community to try and solve these issues without getting whomped over the head time and time again and looking like we're not doing our job. Because that's what's happened so far and 
That is what this is trying to solve. So I would suggest that perhaps this, you know, strange organisation that we may find sometime next term to investigate the issues involving pedestrian safety, particularly around schools, might be a, a, a school safety working party. I don't know, am I drinking the wrong Kool-Aid here, but that, may, that makes sense to me. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against the motion? Can I ask a question? You can, Councillor Williams. <coughs> Um, Councillor Miles has raised um, a bit of uh, uncertainty in my mind what the intent of this motion is. Um, is it a committee, a working party, an advisory committee? And if so, why would only one councillor be on it? Um, what is the status intended of this committee? I can answer that question if I were implored to do so. Uh, yes, thank you, Councillor Miles. Uh, there are... There are committees that have one councillor. The Public Art Committee has one councillor. I don't care if there's two. If anyone else is interested, um, that's fine. I like to, um, I think it's often better to have less than more um, for quorum issues. I don't mind if there's someone else on there. I hope it's somebody that actually has supported all of these motions, all these all these policies of school safety issues. I would, I would hope that whoever jumped onto this committee was Okay, so full support to so what the PC wants. And I'll answer that question. Councillor, could I just working check parties, what the question is again? Yeah, working party, I don't mind. I'll take advice on that. Um, it is uh, probably um, probably a working party. I think is that, it, it's not, I know there are subtle differences, but um, happy to take advice from the general right, manager. can we just take advice? General manager. Yeah. Three, Mr Mayor, I'd suggest if, if the motion's supported, point two says draft terms of reference be developed and so we would bring those back and define. All right, are you happy with that? So uh, anybody uh, wishes... So is it a committee or a working party? Or an advisory committee. An advisory There's committee. There's a very clear distinction between those and the responsibility that goes with them. Yeah. General Manager? What three, should... Th sorry, three, Mr. Yes, Mayor. Yes, please. Um, we can provide, as per point two, a draft terms of reference. So what I would suggest is if we draft something and bring that back to Council for consideration, whether it is advisory and the benefits of an advisory committee, a working group or a, a committee of Council. Councillor Miles. Point of order, Mr Mayor. Uh, motion, uh, point one, that council form a school safety committee. I think it's pretty, pretty clear. Uh, now, the, the, subject, the title is different. In the subject, talks about a working party, and I can see yeah, the where subject, the confusion is. The subject is, right. is the subject, the motion is the motion. Yeah. There may be a typo in the subject, but the motion is to form a committee. Now, happy for the general manager and the staff to, to come back with whatever recommendation they like. But to Councillor Williams's point, um, you know, obfuscation, it is, it is purely a committee, as point one dictates. Mr Mayor, that's not a question. No. No, it's a point of order, as I said. Point of order. All right, uh, anybody wishing to speak uh, for the motion, against the motion? Against the motion, Councillor Crassler. I really don't like speaking against this one because this is actually something I engaged with the previous general manager and this general manager um, and have been waiting patiently on our new um, traffic safety officer and all of the other reports. Um, and I agree that the PNFs and PNCs are going to be the channel to achieve it. Um, I just feel that once again, we're doubling up a little and I think we're you know, in the earlier motion uh, that I put around uh, safety and active transport, I did say that we're targeting the schools and that council engage with government and the local community to do so. Um, I worded my, my motion in such a way to give the general manager and senior staff the freedom they need to advise us. And I would have imagined that the opportunity for a working group would have come back through that when you're talking about setting up safe walking to school programs and so on. So, like, I hate talking against this because I really think that the PNFs and the PNCs are the way to achieve it. And I've been at um, school principal meetings um, on 
three occasions now where the school principals are overwhelmed and they know that it's not their job and they can't support us in suburb-wide safety. I've spoken to the school's principals about it. So I agree, I just think it's already happening over here and if we do it here as well, we're just putting a different, like two lots of basically the same report on the general manager and senior staff's workload and I just don't see why we, although I totally agree with it, I just don't see why we need to do it twice. It's okay, anybody wish to speak for, against? Um, I'd like to speak for the motion, but Councillor Collins, I'd like to ask if you would be willing to change item one with the number of councils on the committee. Yes. I think you said you were happy with that. Yes. Maybe, is there a way we could change that to leave that open for the future? Ten if you want, I don't mind. It's, it's not, we well, can leave that out for now. Uh, just, Consist just, uh, yeah. just leave it so it can be decided later, if, if you'd consider that. Just take out the one. Okay. Members, council members, council. councillor members. Member or, you know, Brack S, whatever. Council, then, Councillor Collins, right reply. Uh, yes. Um, well, first of all, we're not doing this twice because we're not doing it at all. Um, we have had, we have the PNCs that have not been happy with how things have gone. And we've had to, you know, what would be a common sense motion like Reby Road, and I understand Councillor Sanderson is upset that there wasn't enough consultation, obviously because, you know, he lives in the street. Um, now, the only reason it got done was we had support from the media, from the Weekly Times. Took it on as a campaign because it's the right thing to do. And council recommended against it. It was voted for in the local traffic committee. Council staff didn't support it. Um, it took leadership. And that's what, that's what we are here to do. As councillors, we are here to lead. Now, we take advice from the staff, but we don't have to agree with it. And we don't have to wait until we get it in order to act on it. We are the community leaders here, and, and this, is, this is well overdue. It is the PNC, all of them want it. Um, I, I, I cannot understand. You know, you're asking how many members of the committee there are going to be. Look, you can all come, you'll all be members. Or I would be the sole member. Nobody else wants to do it. Then don't come. Don't come to the meeting. It's that simple. And then I'll see what I can do with the PNCs to try and get more better safety outcomes for the community. That you would try and deny that. Deny someone who is saying, I want to get the PNCs together to get some better safety outcomes for school kids. And you, want to, you, want to, you actually want to say, no, we don't want you to do that. Well, let me tell you, I am doing it. Now, we either make this an official committee of council or I am going to have that meeting in this room, which I believe I'm entitled to do, as a councillor, I'm allowed to call meetings, and no councillors will be invited except those that support this motion. So either we do it under the guidance of council and we get better outcomes, or I'll just wing it and I will do it myself and I will do it here because that's what I was elected to do. Thank you, councillor. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's carried. Only one vote against. Uh, Councillor Sanderson, please. I don't think you need to threaten the councillors like that. I think you had the numbers, Councillor. Well, 4.1 Council meetings, October 2020. Move Councillor Williams, second Councillor Miles. Any discussion, Councillors? Put the motion. Those in favour? Against. That's unanimous. 4.2 Community Development Grants. Move Councillor Collins. Second, Councillor Williams. Any discussion required? Just Councillor brief, Collins. Briefly, Mr Mayor. Um, and I have declared uh, an interest in this, um, just my kids being, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's significant. I did notice that the, um, that, that the grant allocation have not, has not been fully subscribed, and I was wondering if it's possible that we could extend so we can actually, um, you know, put that money where, it's, where it should be. Uh, uh, by an amendment to well, extend the period? Well, this is the uh, decision of the committee, so we're putting up a committee report to you. Well, can I amend this. the recommendation, Mr Mayor? Uh, you can try, yep. 
What, what's your what's your amendment? I feel like I'm on a roll here, so I might I might give it a go. Uh, the council allocates it to community development grants as recommended in the report, and to reopen until the uh, the full budgeted amount is expended. The words of the so you'd like the committee to meet again and, and use the remainder of the money? Under the discretion of the general manager. How about that? So we give the general manager the opportunity to spend that money if yes. there's something appropriate that comes up? Yes. Okay. Can I, is that okay? Yes. I think you can. It is okay. Yes. You can. Do have a seconder? Councillor Miles. So let's be quite clear about the words if we could. Is that the remain the remainder of the budget yeah, be budget. expended at the discretion of the general manager? Yes. <clears throat> Under the similar. Yeah. I'm sorry to rephrase it. No, no, that's fine. Anyway, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, if I might say, um, everybody that applied got the amount of money they applied for. Yes, yes, agreed. Yep. Okay, um, Councillor Collins, could you just read that and make sure it's correct? Remainder of the money, the discretion of the general manager to be um, expended. expended under the same. Uh, you know. Um, if I might put a question yes. to the general manager just for clarification. General manager, could you explain what we required to do? Sorry, th three, Mr. Mayor. Um, what I would suggest if we just, along the intent of Councillor Collins's amendment, the council reopened for a further round of funding to seek applications. Um, that are still under the criteria of the policy, but it's open for any further applications Everybody. for the balance of the funds that remain in the budget. May save an argument later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any any comments on this? Can That's I, question. Councillor Grasso? Uh, more on what the general manager just said. Um, if we reopen, uh, does that mean re-advertising? What does this cost council to do for that $1,500? Mr. Mayor, um, what I was proposed, if, if this is supported, that we could advertise through the mayor's um, column, um, the website, and we also have an email, like the e-newsletter as well. So it's, it would be a transparent process. Save any arguments later. All right, can I put the motion, councillors? I'll put the motion. Those in favour, against, that's unanimous. Thank you. I'll tidy up the words. Thank you. Uh, 4.3. No, it, the council re a further round. There's an amendment, but there's no second though. Uh, I, oh, I second incorporated one. the amendment into my motion, which was accepted. Yeah, but I'm the second of the original motion. No discussion as to whether I accepted it. All right, so let's uh, yeah, move the second of the amendment. Council yeah. Collins, Council Miles, yeah. Miles. But, but Councillor Williams, so what, what do you feel we should do? Mr Mayor, the process should have been that the seconder of the original motion, whether they agree to the amendment to the motion. And as I pointed out, there was no seconder to the amendment. So there was. I, I there seconded was. the amendment. Yeah, yeah, but there was nothing on the, the council minute. Really. Yeah, there, but there was a seconder. But um, are you happy with this amendment? Yes, Mr. I'm Mayor, sorry. Just, I'm just sorry we've asked you too late. My apologies. No, but I'm just making sure that the minutes are right so that when they come back to us, yes. that we don't have any misunderstanding. All right. Thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate it. So just tidying up the words. Let's make. Let's not move on before we've um, got it clear. We will agree. Councillor Sanson, did you check this one?
Everybody happy with the uh, notations? You can delete the, uh, the amendment because it was never put correctly. Well, that opens up another issue. It was withdrawn, the amendment. Doesn't it? The amendment was moved and seconded. Ah. Do I need to, if I withdraw, does it? Ah. Well, you've got uh, you it to take the Councillor Williams who's seconded the original. Just give her the order. I don't mind what happens. I think we all agree That's, on what's going to happen. Got, as long as we've got the uh, notations correct. <sighs> Councillor Williams. I'm sorry about the last question. I'm, I'm, I was happy with it, but you had to get the minutes right, otherwise we would have ended up at the end of the day without a second of the amendment. I'm happy for the way it was. system is that we can get it right before we move on. So, councillors, is that correct at the moment, please? Could you all have a look at the problem? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Item 4.3, development applications determined under delegated authority, October 2019. Councillor Williams, seconded Councillor Thrasor. Any discussions, councillors? Councillor Williams? Just the, um, the obvious. Uh, in my mind, and something I've raised time and time again, and that's for uh, what is it, 48 Batemans Road, um, on page 13. We're replacing what is a grand tree in Northvale Island Pine, which is significant, substantial, um, and of high landscape value, with shrubs. Um, if it has to be replaced, it should be replaced with a tree. It has a canopy, it has a trunk, and the definition of a tree in my mind is something eight to ten metres tall. None of the species here provide any value in the future for our tree canopy cover, particularly seeing we're losing a highly significant tree. And you can say the same about um, the pruning of, in the one on page 11, the pruning of the, um, what is it, uh, Morton Bay Fig. Um, the beauty of that tree is its density and its quality. Uh, to prune it, to allow a bit of grass to grow under it, um, I think is, is probably not of value to our community. Again, I raise time and time again these issues about trees, and I intend the new year to raise um, this in a more formal way to see if we can get some resolution and some support for our. Um, uh, one of the key <coughs> values which our community holds in that tree can be covered. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, could you make a note that Councillor Miles left the meeting? Oh, you've done that. Thank you very much. And uh, any further discussion required? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's carried. Councillor Councillor Miles, thank you. Uh, 4.4, report on legal matters, October and November 2019. I'll move that. Is there a seconder? Councillor Williams, thank you. <coughs> Any discussion required, councillors? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's carried. 4.5, development applications determined under... De uh, we've got uh, two councillors have left the meeting. Um, Councillor Miles and Councillor Williams. No. Uh, no, no, no. Councillor um, Miles and Councillor Collins. Sorry. Thanks, Councillor. Moved Councillor Williams, seconded Councillor Crassel. Any discussion required, Councillor? Uh, uh, again, Mr Mayor, the same issue on page 29. This is something fundamentally wrong with our replacement policy. Um, shrubs, banksias, clistamids, magnolias. They're not trees. Thank you, Councillor. Put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's carried. Unanimous. Thank you. Councillor Miles and Councillor Collins. Thank you, councillors. Uh, Four point six is the minutes of the conservation advisory panel meeting, 16 October. Move, Councillor Williams. Seconded, Councillor Collins. 
Any discussion, councillors? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's carried. Uh, 4.7, Community Participation Plan, 2019 Post Exhibition and Adoption. Um, I'm sorry, I was a little bit slow to look up. Can move, Councillor Crassoy, second, and Councillor Williams. Councillor Crassoy, Councillor Williams. Uh, Councillor Crassoy, any discussion? Any further discussion required, councillors? Any clarifications? I'll put the motion. Those in favour, against, that's carried. Thank you. Very good. Uh, 4.8, summary of council investments. Move Councillor Collins, second to Councillor Miles. Any discussion? Um, I have a question, uh, and it's of Councillor Collins. I know some time has passed you've suggested that maybe there are better opportunities to invest some of our monies. Not, I know you're not suggesting at the moment. Um, I wonder if at some stage in the future we might discuss that. Sure. And see if there are better ways to invest our money. Yeah, I think we will consult the two as well. All right. So, any further discussion, councillors? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's carried. Um, general business, councillors, is there any general business this evening? Any questions without notice? Meeting closed 9.06 pm. Thank you very much, councillors.